Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel. So today we are doing the Mizuno S23 wedges. Now I've got the 56 and I've got the 60 down there. I've got the uh, 56 and the satin, the classic normal satin that Mizuno have had for quite some time. And I have got the 60 down there in the cobalt copper. More on that one later on. The main difference is with an S23 wedge is the difference between that and the T22. Why make an S23 wedge? Well, this comes from ES21, the black one from one year ago, two years ago, can't remember now, but the black one. And that one had a centralized sweet spot. So what we say is um, everyone tries to hit the middle. Well, they should try and hit the middle. Uh, but with different golf clubs, they have different uh, sweet spots, effective middles, center of gravity kind of idea. And most wedges, if not all wedges, have a slightly healy um, sweet spot and no different to the T22. So I will put up a screw, a picture up there now and I don't know if I'm allowed to or not. I have my mouse in my hands because there is a lot to talk about, but I'll get through it very, very quickly. It shows you the conventional wedge difference between a T22 and then the S23. Now, it doesn't give me how many millimeters it is horizontally more healy in the T22 over the centralized S23, but it's visual, you can see it. Let's go through some information very, very quickly. Um, the different shapes between the uh, higher and lower lofted. So it ranges from 46 all the way to 62, I think. Um, but as you can see on the screen there, the differences in teardrop to rounded, which blends into the JPX 923 forge kind of idea, because they also blend towards the 46 of these. Seamless family, <laughs> that idea so it changes with the head shape. Um, you've got different grinds, you've got four different grinds. You've got S grind, which is standard, D grind, which is moderate heel and toe relief. C, which is heavy heel and toe relief, and X is for the player. With hard, yeah, the players around. And they are loft specific as well. And then as you can see, kind of get your picture on there. Um, right, has got hydro flu micro grooves, but I'll be honest, um, I will believe they are there because my eyes cannot magnify as much as that. Um, I can see something, but I can't see if it looked like that. So let's trust that they're on there, because I can't see it. Um, and so, yeah, so you've got that more center sweet spot for consistent strikes and stuff like that. You've got the grain flow forging, but with boron infused because of the grooves. There's boron in there to try and keep the grooves as sharp for as long as possible. Um, any other bits and pieces in here? Yeah, right-handed only when it comes to the white satin and cobalt copper is also available in right left-handed. And I'll put a screen up on there with all the information you wanna know when it comes to what availabilities of left and right-handed and also all the other specifications because they are quite, uh, people that wanna care about bounce and all different bits and pieces, have a look at the screen and you can see. Right, so that's all that done. Let's go on a hole. Let's go give this a hit quite a few times just how it feels and looks and all that lot. And then we're gonna go put this up against a T22. As I said, I am I use a T22 because my strike pattern is very, very slightly heel biased as a baseline average. Um, I'm gonna try and do data sets where we measure the two directly and see what differences there are. So right, let's go get it on a hole and see how this thing feels. Data set now change, we have it on Blue Bayo, hole seven, par three, 97 yards. That's all, but it is up 12 feet. So there's the, yeah, this will go about 100 yards, give or take with the 56. Uh, my 54 normally goes around about 104-ish, 105, 104 yards, so I'm guessing. Give or take, we're gonna be there. Um, let's go give it a hit because uh, this one, I've got it in the 56-12, so this is a standard S-hole. Down by the golf ball, this is more of the rounded shape which they're talking about, but again, that, um, that satin is a similar thing what I've always been used to seeing. Oh, that's a miss hit, out the bottom. That's my classic. I am, I am slightly low and slightly healy as a generalized miss, hence why I move over to a T22. Or low on the face is always better, especially with loft, because you're hitting down quite a bit with the loft, so the old face, ball will roll up the face, gives you a little bit of error. Never fat with a wedge, ever. Um, feeling wise, I cannot really, uh, discern the difference, anything between that and the T22. I shouldn't do really, they're made of exactly the same thing. The T22 and also this S23 has got the classic 1025, not E, B for the boron. I can't really feel the boron, I must admit. I mean, the boron's in there to try and keep the uh, grooves nice and sharp for as long as possible, but it just feels soft wedge-like. <laughs> 
face slightly open, I think. Yeah, but I mean, that's spinning well. And then they will do. I mean, uh, when it, it gets quite hilarious when you have reviews and they start talking about spin. Every manufacturer's wedge spins massive amounts. <laughs> Nowadays, with the tolerances of machining and stuff like that, they're all at the absolute limit of how wedges can spin. Doesn't matter if it's short game spin, chip spin, full shot spin, it doesn't matter. The main thing when it comes to these things is making sure you get custom fit for them. And in this case, the difference is the center of gravity. Now, four mil heel, three mil low, that's normally my classic miss. So it'd be interesting to see when I do the testing of this, and I'm gonna have to try and change my strike patterns a little bit. Um, to try and hit both the T22 and also this S23. Bang in the middle, as close as I can, and then deviate the same amount to see what the differences are between the S23 and T22 wedges. Oh, that's not quite buttoned either. Low on the face again. <laughs> Whoa, look at that spin that you get on that. That's no surprise though. What's that spinning? When you catch one low on the face, 11.4. There you go. <laughs> 11,400. Now, yeah, I am using premium golf balls. I am using a urethane covered RB Tour. So it's going to spin. Um, but yeah, the, the feeling off of this thing, it's just lovely, lovely and soft. Fraction open again, but very good. Zoom. and all throw fractionally healy. Yep. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if I can change my strike just on this. I'll tell you, I'll do one more, but I'll see if I can change my strike a little bit to see if there's a big difference in feel between it because I'm so used to hitting fractionally healy, fractionally low as my miss, or as my normal to be fair. Um, again, doing this. It feels exactly like a T22. I can't tell any difference at all. So if anyone turns around and says, oh, there's gonna be a difference between that. No, I hit my T22s constantly. And if it wasn't for the fact that I see S23 on there, it could very easily be a T22. Now, the reason how they've got that center of gravity mass change is because you can visibly see on the back, they have got that badge lump taken out of the heel and is whacked on the toe and the actual hosel itself is not as fat and not as long and not as big basically as a t22 so the center of mass is moved around and again going by that picture i don't know how much exactly a t22 center of gravity sweet spot is horizontally healy of center um, it doesn't show me that, I don't think anyone would tell me, but you can visibly see it. Be interesting to see what difference this one makes. Right, so this one, let's try and catch this one a fraction more toey. Fraction toey, fractionally high. That's the only thing I call it, a fraction heavy. Four mil high, nine mil toe. Um, being honest, do I actually feel any difference between going nine mil heel or nine mil toe in this? No, if I'd have done that in a T22, yes, I would have done. As soon as I move on a T22 to a toe strike, I feel it. And so what would be interesting from my point of view with my good friend, Andy, who has a distinct toe strike, it would be interesting getting him to test some of these things to see what difference he finds in consistency of hitting distances and stuff like that. Because as soon as you wait and move away from effective middle, Matt, that's what happens. You get that drop off of efficiency. You get different spin profiles depending on how much face twist can go. Because sometimes you can actually hit off, say the toe, the face twist open because you're hitting off the toe. You can actually get more spin because as the golf ball is rolling up the face and deforming to spring off, as the toe twists open actually creates more loft and it can actually spin more. Um, so it's not necessarily the same thing when you find with irons and deflection and oh, I won't bore the pants off with people, but right. So feels lovely, looks lovely, especially this thing. Yeah, I've got no dots on this whatsoever at the moment because there's no point because from the point of view of testing between a T22 and an S23, I need like for like testing as best I can do. And there's no point in kind of blurring the muddy in the waters when it comes to this, but this does look down by everyone buy a cobalt copper because they just look lovely. 
The copper wedges and the T22s. Oh. Let's go get the other S23. Let's go put it up against my T22. Hit it loads of times. Try and get the strike pattern right in the middle. And then move left and right as much as we can do and keeping it consistent and see what differences there are actually between in forgiveness levels and differences in like drop-offs and stuff like that. When you move from a T22 with heel bias strike uh, with the effective middle, sweet spot, and then going to an S23 where the effective middle, the sweet spot, is actually in the middle. Okay, so now to the all important number side where I've took the S23 wedge at 56 degrees and put it up against my 54 degree T22. So there's two degrees of loft difference. So we're not looking at which one spins more. We're not looking at which one goes further. We're not looking at that whatsoever. What we're trying to do is we're trying to capture a data set of which I have where both are here as close as I can do to the middle and then from that middle average point, deviate toe heel, a equal amount, thus giving an understanding of how one uh, is more consistent than the other when you take it from the middle. Now, okay, if you're gonna take it from the heel, T22, but from this is the whole, whole idea, the whole reason why S23 was made was because of that middle central uh, sweet spot. So. Let's go have a look at the two. Um, it does say on it S23 55 degree on the yellow, but it means 56. Got carried away the five key rather than the five six, but yeah, it's yeah, small mistake to make. But you know what I mean? It's 55, it's actually 56. So uh, ball speed for the S23 is 86.5 miles an hour, launching at 32.4, spinning 11,000 on average and uh, going 31 yards in the air, 54.4 degrees ascent angle, which is, yeah, that's stopping, and um, carrying 100 yards give or take exactly. So I will put all the standard deviation. So we are comparing two golf clubs. So standard deviation is important. And I'll go into why in a sec. If you look at the uh, same information for when it comes to T22, you got the 54 degree at 88.3. So slightly faster ball speed. It will be because of there is a two degrees static loft difference between the two wedges. So we're not comparing how fast it will be faster. Launching slightly lower, no surprise, 31.9. Spinning slightly less, again, no surprise, at 10.665. Go, still going 31 yards in the air and still descending at um, 54 degrees, very good, and carrying a fraction further, 104. However, before we go into the um, head data, look at the standard deviation, the bottom numbers for the, for the last two uh, data sets. You've got um, carry and total, peak heights, well, well, yeah, it's gonna have an effect, but spin. Main things are spin, carry. Look at the difference. You've got 654 for the T22 and four on the standard deviation against 290, smaller deviation on the S23 uh, and carry, two so there's less variance in carry and spin so if you now go into the head data side of things the s23 clubber speed 86.6 efficiency one on the dot 4.6 down 0 0.5 from the inside 0 0.2 close so basically zero zero lie slightly down because these are not unfortunately these are media samples so my lie isn't right two degrees up i am uh one mil toe two mil low there you go so within reason very, very, very close to middle, within a few mil, one mil. Um, but eight mil uh, lateral, four mil vertical on the standard deviation, and you've got all the other standard deviation on there as well. T22, 86.5 miles an hour rather than 86.6. Same length shaft, there shouldn't be a difference. Uh, 1.02 in efficiency rather than 1.00. Well, there will be because obviously a slight increase in efficiency because there's slightly less loft. Um, 4.7 down rather than 4.6. You can see very, very, very small amounts. Lies one degree and loft 48.3 against 49.9. So within 0.4 of a degree, bang on exactly what it should be, 0.4 of a degree. And then the only difference would be is zero mil heel, so within one mil of the S23, but four mil low when it comes to vertical. Now, I will possibly try and put a picture on there, doesn't matter. Um, my T22 54 degree, the dots need to be moved slightly um, when it comes to the middle dots on the wedge. It needs to be dragged down a few mil because when I'd done my testing, after done my testing, I looked at my T22 uh, wedge and noticed that the dots were fractionally too high compared to the S23. So when it comes to the S23 had two mil low and this is four mil low, actually in reality, 
uh, in all honesty, they're exactly the same. It's just it's artificially showing a few mil too low because I placed the dots a fraction higher on the T2254 degree than the same on the, yeah, but that's the reasons for, I mean, it's honest, it's open, and that's the reason. So, if I go to the graphical representation so you can see, you can see there that strike within obviously two mil of the vertical point. Yeah, you got the idea. Exactly the same. And then we have the all the other numbers which are within reason exactly the same, considering we are talking about two degrees of loft difference. Now, this is the important bit. So we have got a data set from middle where the T22 has a um, normal uh, effective middle sweet spot being fractionally Healy against the S23, which is bang on in the middle. That's why it's designed. Both data sets are from an average of in the middle and both sets of data have the same standard deviation of left and right. So now we can see which one's more consistent. If you go from a middle strike and deviate toe or deviate heel, so it captures some information. We go S23 first. So the good, normal, efficient, decent one. My light angle's so bad. Please, Mizuno, if you get chance, when it comes to sending through media samples. I know it's difficult and it's a pain in the backside, but tweaky tweaky on the lie. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, so 87 miles an hour, 86.8, 0.8 from the inside, 0.3, four mil low, two mil toe. So basically within reason. So that's more like two mil low rather than four, but yeah, two, it's very, very small amounts, basically middle. And you're getting a good efficiency, good distance, maximized everything from that. If you then deviate now towards the heel, Wow, um, this one's 19 mil heel, basically two mil low. Uh, no, sorry, this is actually right. So 19 mil, four mil low. So 23 millimeters away. Um, club path is good and faces baby closed by one degree, 1.3 degrees, it's fine. Um, 0.97, so efficiency's dropped because of the heel. That's not surprising at all whatsoever. No golf clubs do like heel, generally speaking. If you then flick that over to the same thing, but the other way around, you've got 86.7 miles an hour clubhead speed. The efficiency is at one, it's gone back up again. It's not quite the same as you hit out the middle, but this is 14 mil toe. So this is obviously not as bad as the heel. Um, so we haven't lost as much efficiency and generally speaking, remember toe, the toe because it's rotating as it's going along. Um, it will be slightly more efficient than the heel anyway. Right, so we have got deficiencies, we have drops either side of middle, that's normal. Let's go have a look at the T22. Remember the T22 baseline efficiency should be higher, of which it is on average. So let's go to T22, T22 um, normal shot. Now I've captured one here where it was one of the best efficiencies on there. 0.2 from the inside, 1.4 close, so just a baby closed. Yep. Um, normal high, 10 mil heel. So that is slightly healy, but I got one of the best efficiencies out of a 10 mil heel. So now we remember, I don't know exactly how many millimeters the T22 has that effective middle being slightly healy. All wedges are like that because of the shape of the wedge, because of the size of the hosel and everything else like that, it can't be helped unless you change the design like the S23 or the old school, now old school, ES21. Um, I can understand why the Tor didn't um, catch when it comes to the ES21, because the ES21 was a really thick, clumpy, um, really good wedge, but it just didn't attract Tor players. This one, the S23, has much more Tor-inspired looks, and so therefore, it'd be interesting to see how many people put it in the back. But, um, so T22, off the heel, middled effectively. If you then move that to the heel, like proper heel, this is like 19 mil gross um, off of middle, and that's dropped to 103 from 105. So the efficiency's hardly dropped going 17 mil heel. And bear in mind, 17 mil heel, there's not that much left before you get to the hosel rocket. Yeah. Now if we flick it over to 15 mil toe, and within one mil of the previous S23, um, Efficiency is now dropped to 0.97. That's quite a marked jump between 1.05 uh, and 0.97. That's 0 0.08 of a drop, which in wedge terms is a lot because you can see the distance there. You've got carried between 106 down to 97. You've dropped 10 yards within reason off strike. And when you look at the S23, if I look at the best ones on S23 was 103, and the worst one was 98, five yards. 
and that's deviating strike very, very, very similar amounts. Now remember, without going too much in depth with this, um, we're going from a zero point. That's the whole idea of this S23 wedge was for people who are going from a zero point and deviating slightly toey, slightly heely. The T22 is always for people which have much so like me grown up with wedges where every single wedge had a heel biased strike point. So I hit where the middle is and it, I do gradually, well, I, I, my, my normal strike point is around about six or five or six mil heel and then I, gra I gravitate slightly low sometimes as a miss. But that's where I normally am. And that's bang on line where this T22 normal wants you to hit it. Um, but then if you do hit a toe shot off a T22, you do get some mark drop off because it is so far away from effective middle. With this new S23 wedge with the effective middle being in the middle, if you deviate a little bit heely, a little bit toey, you only deviate in the same amount left and right of a middled sweet spot. You won't have as much efficiency drop, but that's fine if you're a toey or a middle striker. So that's the reason why now we've got two distinct different wedges to now suit two completely distinct different types of strike golfers, which now opens up potential for um, my friend Andy to test these S23 wedges to see if he can get a little bit more consistency without changing his stroke, without changing his technique, without changing anything by just changing his wedges to something which is potentially gonna be a little bit more helpful off those toe strikes that he likes to hit and everyone does as well um, but depending on what kind of striker you are you could get some quite easy gains from literally just changing your wedges don't change anything else just the wedges right so anyway hope you like the video if you did like it go on little thumbs up youtube likes it so do i next to that is a little red button it's a subscribe button it's free it helps the channel out no end if you could do that that'd be great and also next to that is a bell icon that's a little notification bell if you click that one that will notify you next time i upload another video so I hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.